All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks uh, for joining another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hey, John. Howdy, howdy. So we have a special guest today. We are um, doing an interview, uh, somebody that we had kind of touch base with um, from some of the keto community. So we wanted to bring this along to you guys. And um, John is actually going to start this one off. And um, Yeah, you know, so... I was trying to think back. So Tracy, we first met, I believe, off a key, uh, keto forum, and I gave you like some draft content for my phone podcasting kind of class. And uh, I think is, is that is that right? Is that how we first started chatting online? I think we met at KetoCon first. Did we meet at KetoCon and first? I, c- I couldn't remember which one went first. Yeah, I think we met at KetoCon and I gave you my card and told you I wanted to launch a podcast just interviewing, you know, successful people that have had really good success healing their body. And then after that, you hit me up on Facebook to say, hey, I have, you know, this ebook and I can help you and all that. Yeah. So full disclosure, you didn't actually go with my my uh, duct taped uh, f- phone interviewing style, but but hopefully that at least gave you some confidence and kind of head you along your podcasting journey, which is actually really why we wanted to kind of have a short conversation because you're pretty close to launching a podcast or did you actually officially launch it? I launched it two days ago. Two days and ago? Yeah, yeah. It's so, exciting. Yeah, I'm It is. It's super exciting. And I, you know how like success breeds more success. Like yesterday at my real job, I had just such a great day because I was on such a high and it kind of just like bleeds into other areas when you're like feeling good about things. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's definitely uh, the excitement is contagious for lack of a better term, but so I, I loved your, I don't think it's the tagline necessarily for your podcast, but definitely on your website, you say that you're a health coach for the busy women that want to burn fat, boost energy, build muscle. So uh, just so everyone can kind of get an understanding of what your podcast is going to be about, can you give me like a quick kind of rundown of your recommendations or what you follow when it comes to nutrition? Obviously keto, since we mentioned KetoCon, but maybe a little bit more detailed. Sure. Basically, my recommendation, and I do like a lot of coaching locally as, you know, I'm a personal trainer, so I work with a lot of local people, but my goal is to, you know, do online coaching so I can just get a broader audience. But my approach is very bio-individual because at my nutrition school, that's what we, they teach, is that what works for one may not work for another. And so we just need to try and see what works for us. And that was my experience personally. I started keto, gosh, like a year and a half ago, and I really wasn't getting the results that I accepted, and especially with my background. So I ended up having to go and get a food sensitivity test, and that results came out in July. And since I eliminated the foods that 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 test indicated I shouldn't eat and started healing my gut and taking probiotics, everything just changed for me. And so that's kind of like what I am preaching to people is that you need to see what works right for your body. And I always say start with, you know, the higher fat macros. And depending on your athletic schedule and goals, you know, you can tweak and change and add more protein and just see how your body responds to it. Yeah, that's that's that sounds uh, pretty pretty uh, directionally the same as us. And one of the things that you did mention is your food sensitivity. Do you mind me digging in a little personally and saying what 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 foods are, did you uh, take out? Oh, <laughs> okay. So a couple of years ago, I did a stool test for gluten, and uh-huh. I did it not because I thought I had a gluten sensitivity, but because I wanted to be able to like explain the process to my clients and, you know, cause it's <laughs> kind of gross, right? You know? Right, 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 right. So, I, so frankly, I I've never done I it. To... Maybe I should, I, maybe I should try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're going to do it, you might as well do the whole food panel because let me tell you that you don't want to do it twice. And that I did. So like first I did my gluten and it came back high. Like anything over 10 is considered gluten sensitive. And I, 
scored like 178. Wow. And so they, I know, really? So they recommended, that lab recommended a permanent and strict gluten-free diet. Well, you know how people are, right? So I, my husband, my other family members are like, that's just bull, blah, 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 right? So they were very big naysayers. And so I did it kind of halfway. Well, with gluten, you can't do it halfway. It's pretty much all or nothing because every time any of that gets in your gut, it just starts, you know, churning it and it, and it destroys your, your gut. So maybe a, fast forward a year later, I ended up doing a dairy sensitivity test because somebody said, oh, you know, usually if you're gluten sensitive, you're dairy sensitive. So did that. That came back positive as well. That wasn't quite as high, but I still like was kind of, and this is all before keto. And I, I didn't pay attention. I didn't, I just ignored it just because I was just being foolish. And I love cheese. And I was like, so I was, and I love Greek yogurt. So I didn't, I was being extremely foolish. And then now I'm almost 52 and I'm like, okay, so I'm either going to age in health or I'm going to age in sickness. I need to get an evaluation of where my body is so I know where, how to get to where I need to go. And that's why I just jumped in and did the full 95 panel. And of course, gluten came up, dairy came up, like a void, like off the chart. Mm. Um, eggs, and I live on a little farm in San Martin, California, so I have chickens and I'm like, oh, great, no more eggs. Um, the other things that kind of sucked were avocado, almonds. Oh man, I, I can't know. do this. I might, I might cry if I got those results that you just laid out. Well, let me, let me explain how you cannot have to get those results. So like all these great foods that I loved, right? And I'm like, this sucks. So I called the lab and I'm like, now food's going to be really boring, you know? So I called the lab and I was just talking to them and they said that if you overeat a particular food, you can develop an antibody to it which will show up on this test. Yeah, it triggers an inflammation response. And so what they recommend is doing a rotational diet where, you know, you don't eat the same food over and over and over day after day, but you rotate your food. So like say on Monday you have grass-fed meat and then on Tuesday you have fish and on Wednesday you have, I don't know, pork or chicken or something, but you don't repeat the same foods and that's what I do. That's what I've done. So now I'm trying to break that up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you mean you're in trouble with the rotation <laughs> with the lack of yeah the lack of rotation oh so the other you guys thing, are too well so her more than me so i, I am definitely uh i i, I, ro- I rotate everything and I'm, I'm a firm believer I, I read the perfect health diet a couple of years ago and I, I wouldn't say i follow it to a t but i i definitely took took us took some nuggets out of that and i do implement them in my life i try to have you know, fish a couple times a week. I try to, you know, uh, do pork one day, one time, one week, chicken the next, uh, you know, I'm doing crock pots, stuff like that. But, uh, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to miss the fact that you said heal your gut, because the other thing is not only the rotation, but it's once you've healed your gut, sometimes you can, is that true that sometimes you can get back the, uh, ability to have some of the things that you first got listed as, as uh, sensitive to? Yes. Other than gluten. Like I, I really think that stuff's poison for yeah. most. Um, yeah, well, gluten does have its own little uh, pedestal in the uh, ancestral health movement. So yeah. We, so we talked that, a Yeah, that's bad. But what you can do is like in the meantime, so you want to get off of those bad foods for like the, any foods that show up as a void, you want to eliminate them for about six months. And during that time, take probiotics, fermented foods, I've introduced enzymes again, um, just so that I can help my body digest. And also a big thing that people don't think about is chewing their food more effectively so that the consistency before you swallow is more liquefied than swallowing whole chunks of food. This will help your gut because then it doesn't have to work so hard to break it down, but the enzymes in your saliva actually really do um, initiate the digestion process. Man, we, we could definitely keep talking because I'd love to talk <laughs> to you about then in a minute, in, intermittent fasting because that's also giving your gut a rest. But I, I really don't want to leave. That. I don't want to leave this without talking about exercise though. Okay. What's your exercise model then that you're recommending? We can have a whole show about intermittent fasting later. 
Well, for exercise, again, it depends on where your starting point is. So, but I like to do a variety of exercises. Um, So I usually like to lift heavy two to three days a week. I do boot camp, which is cardio, but more not like a low intensity steady state, but more like a a hit, hit, you know, where you're doing, yeah, like you're doing burpees and then lunges with biceps. So that's like my cardio day as a boot camp day. Even though we do incorporate weights, we're doing, you know, light 10 pound dumbbells. You said um, boot camp te- is, is that a group, group X? I think I remember yeah. you saying you do. You, so that would be in my mind. That's like where you've got multiple people in a room and you're leading them through that hit exercise or that boot camp exercise. Right. There's a, usually about, I don't know, 10 to 20 people in a big full gym and we have bleachers. So we work on those do lunges, burpees, core, you know, it's a whole body workout, but I call it my cardio because it's just a lightweight workout. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're, you're, you know, doing maybe a sprint and then you jog back and then a sprint and jog back and then lunges. Well, full disclosure, I teach Les Mills classes. So I'm right there with you. This is like uh, boot camp. sounds like it kind of mirrors uh, what we would call a grit Grit cardio or strength or something like that. And I, I teach a CX works class. So I, I really truly like the fact that you said that you couple that with lifting heavy. So when you lift heavy twice a, twice a week, I think you said, are, what, are you sticking to full body movements? Or are you doing like a split or. Well, I mix it up. So I just like to mix things up a lot. I have kind of ADD and. Um, <laughs> depending on yeah, what equipment so they have. So, so <laughs> strength in numbers. So I love you. Yeah. You have the same, you like to mix it up. Well, I have ADD. So, <laughs> oh. so yeah, you know, the, you call it, it's adult onset delayed or attention deficit disorder. Like I don't really have ADD, but I feel like I do because I'm always working on a gazillion things at once. Um, I mean, I haven't been diagnosed, I should say, but so, uh, so like one month I might do full body two times a week. Like, so this month we're doing Tuesday and Friday full body. So we'll do, you know, today we did squats, RDLs, Romanian deadlifts, um, pull-ups, you know, biceps. Oh, I can't remember what we did for shoulders and arms, but, and yesterday I taught Pilates. So that was core, right? So that was a full body workout. Tomorrow's a boot camp. But then on like say November, we might switch it up and do like a, two or three day split, like an upper body day and a lower body day and do that. And then maybe in December, we'll do like a three day split where we do, you know, I like to do opposing muscle groups. So like back and triceps one day, um, shoulders and biceps one day, and then legs one day. So to get Jolene into lifting heavy, I challenged her to do like a, basically a strong lift five by five to kind of start with. But I think w- oh, yeah. you've, you've kind of shifted now, Jolene, right? So you're doing a little bit more of the, what she's talking about, where the opposite body parts. Yeah. Yeah. I do a split now. Um, I do it three days a week. So I do, I do have a question though. So around cardio, that is one thing yeah. I hate. <laughs> um, so how, how important do you think that that is? And do you prescribe that um, on a normal basis to everyone, or is that also individualized? I personally think cardio is important because I think it's really good to work your heart. And people like, I've heard people jokingly say that Arnold says to work your cardio, you just lift faster. But I just believe that doing cardio, especially like a hit type of cardio is just fantastic because you really do stretch your heart limits and get that heart rate up as high as you can and then let it recover and notice how, how quickly you can recover to get back to normal. You know, so do you know what Tabata is? Oh yeah. I I do not actually, I've never heard of it. So Jolene Tabata, like if you hate cardio, there's an (laughs) app called Tabata pro. Okay. So Tabata is like when I, when I don't have time to go to the gym for whatever reason, if I have an early work appointment, Tabata is like you do 20 seconds all out. Like say I like to do the bike. The 20 seconds really like just all out and then a 10 second break. And all you need to do that is eight rounds. So it's four minutes. Like I always do like a two minute warm up and a two minute cool down, but eight rounds. So four minutes. So after eight minutes, you're, you really kind of boosted your metabolism and let it 
stay up there throughout, you know, most of the day, right? Because you've done this really intense workout. But I think it's like just general, you know, like my boot camp classes or, you know, some of your Les Mills classes, I'm familiar with Les Mills. Those are like great for getting your heart rate up there and then letting it recover. And it's, I don't think it's necessary for weight loss per se, but I think it's necessary for overall good heart health, or I think it's beneficial. So I, I kind of want to add some here because I personally have a huge distinction between the sprint slash hits style that you just mentioned. Now, I don't actually call that cardio. So, so just if, just for a, like a mindset shift for me in my head, when, when I think cardio, I think somebody who's running on the treadmill or doing the Stairmaster. And when I think of, I, I, I tend to, i maybe even have been known to say I don't do cardio, but I still do that sprint stuff that you're talking about there. So, so just to remember in your heads, when you're thinking about this stuff, there are, there is different types of cardio. And sometimes if somebody says mm-hmm. they don't do cardio, the, the sprinting once a, once a week or sprinting, whatever that kind of methodology is, is definitely in, in my fitness routine. So, oh, okay. we went- so there are, that's lists. Like that's what I, well, I call it hit or list for cardio. So you have hit high intensity interval training or yep. list, um, low intensity steady state. Yes. Okay. Great. I, 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 I like those two terms because it distinguishes between the two. So, um, so did that answer your question, Jolene? I know I kind of, I kind of took over there. Oh no, yeah, you're I fine. Like yeah. I mean, over. I have a question for you, Jolene. Did you, how long did you do, um, strong lifts five by five and what was your experience with it? Um, actually I, I loved it. Um, surprisingly because that side of the gym, um, I've been very, very reluctant to go to, <laughs> and I don't know if it's mm-hmm. because all of those big muscle bound boys are very intimidating. <laughs> Um, but my husband and I started it. And so, um, we did it for 12 weeks. Uh, saw, I honestly, I saw great results. Um, quite a lot of muscle definition, which I was a little bit shocked with. I wasn't expecting to see that much in such a short amount of time. Um, I love the fact that I wasn't in the gym very long. Um, and that's, I've just recently, um, probably, well, since we've been back from KetoCon, switched over to the split. Um, although my husband likes that better cause that's more, um, familiar with him. Like he, that's what he's always done. Um, so he does enjoy that. I'm not crazy about the amount of time that I have to spend in the gym now. Um, we were doing it in the morning before work, but doing a split takes longer. So now we have to go in the evening. Um, I still am seeing probably more results. Quite honestly, I, I feel like I have more definition in my arms than I did. Um, and this is clearly a shorter amount of time. Um, but it's, it's really the time in the gym. So I'm struggling with sticking yeah. with this what, or going back. So How volume much time wise, do you, do you spend? Yeah. Uh, so with the, um, five by five, we were spending just over an hour in the gym. Um, and now we're spending close to two, sometimes two and a half. And you're going oh more. Oh my gosh, often. that's crazy. Yeah. And and I don't know if it's because I'm fairly new um, to doing the split. So the machines are not as familiar to me. And clearly there's more of them to do than what I would do with five by five. Um, so, you know, you factoring in the the changing of the the machines and trying to get the rhythm is probably some of the time that we're spending. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of the time there. <laughs> Yeah, and so to you pitch, don't have to do that. That's, okay, I'm sorry, John, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was just going to say to pitch the older episodes, if you go back in the Ketonian Qu- uh, Corner archive, the uh, episode that's, I think it's called uh, Week One, Week One, Five by Five Review, there's a just an interview on when you first starting out. And it's great if, if you're a, a woman who is scared to, to try it, you do, a, she does a great job kind of talking through. Uh, overcoming those fears and, and doing it for the first time. But, but I like uh, going back to the question you were asking on the, you don't have to do that much. Uh, I kind of cut you off there. So what were, what were you oh, I just, going to tell her? I, I just don't think anybody needs to spend that much time in the gym. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys remember body for life with Bill Phillips? Remember that whole book program? It was probably like maybe 15 years ago. It was really popular. 
I mean, he just says people overtrain. And I, my thing is I go to the gym from 5.30 to 6.30. If I can't get it done in that time, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I don't I think like you need attitude. to work out <laughs> that long. That's crazy. Well, and, so oh. I, I do think, though, that you do see more gains from added volume. But I do think it's it tapers off, right? So I, I would agree with you that an hour in the gym is probably, for me personally, that sweet spot to where – it's the least amount of time to get the most amount of, of benefit. But I, I do think because I've, you know, I've, I've had, had other people I've worked with that want to put in that extra. I just don't think if you've put in an extra hour, you don't get to double the results that you did that first hour. So it, I think yeah, the gains I, taper, yeah. taper off. So it's, it's a cost, and I don't want to say cost benefit analysis, but a cost time analysis, um, what your goals are. Diminishing returns. You know, there you go. <laughs> the law of diminishing returns. Cause oh, like, yeah. so I don't know if you guys met that gal that was at KetoCon, really pretty gal, long blonde hair. She spoke at the mic. She's a combo bodybuilder and marathon runner. Do you guys remember her? Yeah. We oh, her. She, oh, she owns, she owns a gym, right? I don't think she owns a gym, but she trains. Okay, so there was this place. two. Gotcha. But she was, she, I talked to her for a while there. I wish I could get in contact with her because she was amazing. She works out of this facility in, I want to say Minnesota. And I can't remember the name of it right now off the top of my head, but she's a bodybuilder, like competitive bodybuilder. And she only that their philosophy at that gym is they do a half an hour, twice a week, full body. That is it. That is it. And you should see her. She looks amazing. So their philosophy, which I am trying to adopt, is to do a slow rep, squeeze at the top, and then lower with a, a slow eccentric contraction. And, and they only do a half an hour. And you have to wait at least 48 hours between workouts. And Dude, that's a, you should that's see the this body, gal. body by science model. Uh, what's the name of that guy? He's got the book. I think, I think the book is called body by science. He's got the slow, I call it the slow burn, but yeah, I, 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 think, I think that model, that, that, that model, it does have a lot of scientific backing behind it. So I, I, I love the direction we're going, but unfortunately we don't have a ton of time and I want to make sure you pitch your podcast. So what, what's yeah. the name of your podcast? Cause we're going to hear more if we tune in, right? Of course. I mean, it just launched, so I only have, I think right now, four episodes up. But my goal with it is just to, well, after keto, well, before keto, I was so inspired. Just hearing all these podcasts with stories of people healing their bodies, I just needed to be a game changer and just get out there more and help people. So my goal is to interview people who have had health benefits, like I've done two so far with epilepsy that I met at KetoCon, um, two people that have lost, ex you know, a, quite a bit of weight in a fairly short time. And I would love to interview people who've healed their body from all the other diseases. You know, PCOS is a big one, I think, because infertility, people spend a fortune on infertility. And I would love to be able to help people with that. Um, but cancer, diabetes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autoimmune disease. So I'm just really wanting to get the word out there and share people's results so that, you know, somebody else out there struggling with one of those types of, of diseases can like just find some hope in that, you know, like if it worked for them, then it can work for you too, you know, hopefully. Yeah. It, uh, I, so, I know it, it is pretty inspiring, isn't it? So oh, it's it's, what, it's why you're doing it, right? It's the passion. Excuse me? I said, that's why you're doing it, right? It's the passion and the, and the uh, reward that you get from helping connect people with things that can make them better. So what, what's right. the name of your show? It's called Be Well, Be Keto. And the tagline is Ordinary People, Extraordinary Results. All right. Fantastic. And so. that's, you can search for that in iTunes. And is it available in any of the other platforms? Well, so far, I found it on my podcast app, which was cool. So it's Podcast Republic. I submitted it to Google Play. I mean, I'm Fantastic. such a newbie at all this that I, I don't even know that I'm also doing a local program called Keto Clutch because I don't know if you remember that guy, Ted, that spoke at KetoCon 
Um, yeah. But he said, we need to do a grassroots movement where everybody goes home and starts their own little support group. So I started yeah. that. Well, Ted, Ted's, uh, we interviewed Ted just a short, it's on the keto vendor. Uh, he's only got, I mean, I think we only talked with him for about, uh, not even 10 minutes, but yeah, he, he is, uh, definitely, uh, promoting what I really liked about him is promoting the, the movement more than promoting individual things or styles. Uh, I really liked his kind of overarching kind of a message there. So we talked about what you think, like five different topics we could have an entire show on. So uh, no, no uh, shortage <laughs> of content when talking with you, it sounds like. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's just, I, this is what I live and breathe. I mean, this is just my favorite thing in the world. So when I took a business class once, um, somebody said to me, what would you do all day long for free because you love it so much? And this is it. So Amen. just trying to be an inspiration and helping people. All right. So uh, just as parting, uh, any, uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, uh, what, what, I mean, obviously search for the podcast, but if they want to follow you on the socials or a website, any, any uh, website we should point people to? Sure. My website is highenergygirl.com. And if you go to that website on the right side, there's like a free ebook that talks about, I think it's nine tips to improve your energy. And of course it does start touching on the keto movement, eat more fat type thing. And on social media, it's the high energy girl is my tagline. So Instagram, YouTube, I have lots of YouTube videos and Facebook. It's all the high energy girl is my brand. It's funny. Well, Here's a funny you story. You don't sound like a noob. My... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm new at podcasting. <laughs> Oh, okay. But gotcha. not new at the rest. The funny story how I got my brand name. Actually, I did this class and they, that, was, that was what we came out with was the, the brand High Energy Girl. But shortly afterwards, I had my blood work done and my B12 was really high without supplementation. And so my mom's like, well, gosh, I take B12 so I could have more energy. And then I was like, hey, that's why I have my brand name because I have more energy. <laughs> so I came by it naturally, I guess. <laughs> Well, that's Isn't as good that as any, any message to wrap up on. So thank you for uh, spending the time with us. Uh, unfortunately, um, I'm actually in the office. I'm getting kicked out of my conference room. So I've got oh, to oh, uh, oh. drop off the call. So Jolene, any, uh, okay. any closing thoughts? Yeah, I, it's been a wonderful uh, talking with you, Tracy. This is, this oh. is exactly um, our, the same sort of model that we have. Uh, we're both very passionate about this, so it is such a joy to talk to somebody else who has just as much passion. Um, appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and talk with us. And we will definitely uh, get all of your information out into our show notes and post it out on our uh, Facebook page as well. So, you know, hopefully generate some uh, traffic for you. So, but again, thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we can talk with thank you again you. soon. Thank you both, you guys. Have a super great weekend, okay? Great. Thanks. You too. Okay. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.